Gretter Gauntlet Armor, unboxed. Hi. Uh, I thought I would do a quick unboxing video and then maybe turn it into a video review of a very exciting new parcel I got. These are some uh, hardened steel gauntlets from Gretter the Slow. Uh, people have said to me that basically he makes the best, most bomb-proof uh, medieval combat gauntlets you can get. They're really popular for SCA fighting, they're popular for um, heavier kinds of HEMA, and they're really popular in the Battle of Nations. Uh, so, you know, any gauntlets obviously are a, sort of a premium item. These are mitten gauntlets, and uh, I haven't seen them before. I've seen other people's pairs, and they're obviously all custom fit, but even someone else's fit me really, really well. So I'm very excited about this. I've been waiting about a year for them now. Um, so we'll see how they do. Might do a couple cuts here to reduce the amount of packing time. So you can see that they're packed really, really well. Uh, I'll weigh them after. They come with some sort of tissue, I guess. So he ships everything really quick. I think these came out across the country in just a couple days. And these particular ones are his nickel plated gauntlets. Ooh, yeah, those are shiny. Gonna be dumbfounded for a minute. So this is obviously the left mitten, and you can see really, really nice work peening on all the rivets. It's got a fully enclosed thumb, so that if your thumb is whacked against something, it has uh, a lot more protection but there's still glove exposed, so you can still feel your weapon. Really, really good stitching job. You can see the gloves are stitched in really well, and a lot of times with gloves, the problem is the fingers feel too short because the stitching shortens the fingers, so we'll see how that is. Uh, and then there's these, looks like leather tabs riveted to the underside, and then the glove itself is uh, riveted to the tabs. Same on the side here. It looks like there's some close cell foam on the back of the hand to help take some of the sting out. These are uh, a sort of modified hourglass gauntlet. They're called that because it's sort of hourglass shape. And the reason why it flares so much is that so that when your arm is in it, you can move around and the cuff has lots of room on your hand. So we'll see how that works. And you can feel there's some articulation here in the wrist to help you get this motion off of this rivet. So this is probably a slotted rivet under there. And this one's just a little loose so it can pivot. And then the entire thing is lined in leather and riveted really nicely. Um, he was a little concerned because he thought maybe the nickel plating job, he sent it off to a nickel shop for nickel plating, there's his maker's mark, may not have done a perfect job that it might be flaking, but it looks pretty immaculate to me. Regardless, he's such a perfectionist, he um, took the, the price of the nickel plating off of the gauntlets for me, so that was really nice of him. And this is rolled out here so that you can see this scab on the bottom of my hand from my demi gauntlets. You can see this rolling here would stop you from that sort of thing. So let's try this glove on. Oh, the gloves are so nice. That feels really good. Now, obviously, you're going to lose some thumb mobility. Immediately, I'm feeling like I want to move my thumb further out this way than I can. But this plate really protects you from blows this direction. And although with a bare hand, I can do this. I'm not going to do that often when I'm grabbing a weapon haft. So, I mean, I'm always going to have my hand relatively closed. Um, it feels like maybe I just need to rotate my thumb in there a little bit. Um, the angle on this thumb is a little bit off for me. There's This loose rivet allows you to move here. I think my thumb is rotated a little bit more this direction inside, so I want to bend a little bit more at that angle than at this angle. But again, maybe that's just to open and close things. So, let's check the other one. Very shiny. And then we'll take a look at what it looks like with uh, armor on. So I've got both the gauntlets unwrapped and as you can see I'm wearing some of my arm harness. I'm not wearing the rear braces or shoulders so these are going to slide down a little further than normal. But this is a good way to see how the mobility is going to be. So you can see with this rear brace, or sorry, this van brace on I've got pretty good mobility. But what it's going to do is make my forearms larger so the hourglass is going to bottom out a little bit more. The left is, or the right is just as immaculate as the left. Get these bad boys on. 
and then I'll grab a couple different weapons. So this is actually still really good motion. Uh, the only place where I sort of bottom out is cocking my hand way back. And first and foremost, these are meant for great weapons, so like two-handed weapons. Um, they're built for titanic protection, uh, even against steel weapons in the Battle of the Nations groups and things like that. So you wouldn't expect the same sort of mobility as you would out of, um, you know, out of like a really light finger gauntlet or something like that. But still pretty good motion. So the first off, I'll, the thing I'll do is I'll grab sort of what it's least good for probably. I haven't done this yet, but. Here's a single-handed arming sword I made as a backup for fighting, and we'll see how my mobility is. It's not too bad, actually, and I made I made sure, I called Gretter and made sure that I was leaving the handle large enough for the gauntlet, because obviously the gauntlet makes your hand bulk here. So, the main place I'm feeling a lack of motion is just in angling my wrist down this direction. So. Normally I'd probably get the sword to about there. So just a, a small difference, and I can open the hand a little bit without losing grip. So there'd be a few things, like if I'm reaching for a high shot or to get over a guard, I might need to open my hand a little bit. But pretty good for handling a backup weapon. Um, recognizing that when you have two hands on a weapon, you don't get nearly as much wrist motion because your other arm is limiting the angle itself, right? So I can't go to there with this arm, with this bottom hand holding. So the mobility, that, or likewise, you're not gonna cock as far back this way when you're holding something else, holding your bottom hand on something. So not bad for single-handed mobility. It's not a replacement. I wouldn't fight as a primary weapon style with a single, single-handed weapon with these just for that little bit of lost mobility, but overall really good. Recording a cat. <laughs> <laughs> You're recording you. Okay. All right. Well. Um, anyway, I've also got a, a theory about fighting with uh, weight in a weapon or in a gauntlet. So, if these gauntlets say weigh a pound, and the weapon weighs one pound, that's a total of two pounds that you're reciprocating back and forth, that you're changing direction on. Um, but. I'm not convinced that all the weight in your hand or in your arm is transmitted through the weapon to your target as effectively as if, in that case, the sword just weighed two pounds and you had a bare hand. So, um, you know, I've heard car guys say that unsprung weight, like weight in your wheels and tires, is much worse than weight that is uh, suspended by springs. So, for instance, having 10 pounds in your trunk is a lot less bad for your handling characteristics than having 10 extra pounds of rims and, and tires. So I think having a heavy hand uh, isn't necessarily quite as good. Again, this is an arming sword. It's a backup for when you have, um, when you've got, uh, a, say, a great weapon that you can't use anymore, you need a shorter weapon. So it's totally fine in this case, but for mainline tournament fighting, it, I wouldn't use these gauntlets uh, for the weight transfer and, and flexibility issues uh, as a primary purpose. So uh, what would be a primary purpose? Uh, you have to use your imagination a little bit because I don't have a great weapon handy, but let's pretend this wasn't half of a pike and was instead like a great axe or a bardiche or a great sword or glaive or something like that. So something that could be used for thrusting, but also used for uh, cutting, chopping, smashing, that sort of stuff. So uh, in that case, I think that's where these gauntlets are really meant for and where they really shine. So here you can see, if you've got a bit of a wide grip, uh, all the wrist flexibility issues are gone, right? I can still get pretty much full motion here across both of them. I bottom up just a little bit. And with the metal cutaway along the top of the hands and around the bottom of the hands, I can feel right away that I get a lot of that good rotational motion. So again, this is just fiberglass, half of a fiberglass pike. But if you imagine this was a great sword or like a metal, like a blunted metal bardiche, you could see how you could generate a lot of easy motion and those little bits of area that when you're holding a hafted weapon, you can see it's quite unlikely I would get struck in the thumb. To get struck in this exposed portion, the tip of the weapon would need to come down like this because otherwise you're just gonna bridge across this gap. So feels very protected in the back of the thumb, which is really usually quite exposed. Has this big honking hardened metal plate, so it feels very safe. But I still get like a ton of the motion you would need to do stuff. You can even do like a, off-body shot like that quite easily 
just open this back hand a little bit and the fact that the, it's cut, you can see how far back this is cut. Right away, you can see the, it can go all the way to here before you run out of range of motion. So if you step in for say like a rib shot, that's not hard with these gauntlets at all. So you can automatically feel how great they would be fighting great weapons. Also, this won't be the best test of the best mechanics like this, but I mean, you can see even there, it's starting to scuff the, the shaft of this because the metal at the bottom of the thumb is stapling into like that when it got hit, stapling into the haft of the weapon. So there's no sting, feels very protected. Um, this is again, just a fiberglass shaft, so I don't wanna whack it too much. Even fighting with great weapons, even with gauntlets like this that are very protected, you still don't want to get in the habit of taking shots on the hands. But I feel really comfortable that if I did take a shot in the hand without getting my hand out of the way, this is about as good as protection as you could ever hope for. Um, some of that's the mitten, some of it's the thumb. Uh, if we treat this more like the weapon it is, like a purely stabbing weapon, maybe these aren't quite as good. So if you imagine this was like 9 or 12 feet long as a pike, uh, it feels a little awkward on line with the target, just a little bit. They're a little heavy, and you can see, I think the awkwardness comes from actually the protection on the underside of the thumb here. Generally, when I, if I grip this like I would, say, in lighter finger gauntlets or hockey gloves or something like that, like this, you can see it's, it's the metal of the thumb that's touching the, the half, so I can't really feel it as well. If I go to where the leather is, a little further down, that means I have to change the angle to here. And what that does for me, at least in my default like spear fighting stance, that means if I go from here, I feel like I've, I've got a very point on stance. What I need to do is cock this elbow out a little bit more and you can see it brings the tip from here to about there. And I can adjust with some body positioning. Like maybe I'll just learn to fight a little bit more sideways. But my default sort of spearing stance was sort of more online like this. The nice thing about that being is that it brings your back shoulder forward a little bit. So here, not hit the camera, but from here, you can see I can reach quite close by rolling the shoulder forward. I think if I fight a little more sideways, so if my grip changes, it'd be something to get used to. But that's maybe three, four inches shorter, even if I rotate. Maybe. Anyway, something to get used to, they're also not really meant for pike fighting. If you're fighting with pikes, either when someone charges you, you're going for your arming sword or you're stepping back in the line and letting other people fight or you're like defended right up here anyway and your hands aren't really in the way. Um, so these aren't, I wouldn't say these are perfect pike fighting weapons either uh, or pike fighting gauntlets, but I think they're certainly a lot better than the old uh, Kydex or egg armor gloves I had. Um, so yeah, really excited. I would say this is where they're happiest. This is where they're medium happy. This is where they're medium sad. Uh, and then I guess one other thing to talk about for HEMA and EMP and other more open, you know, open combat styles. How are they for grabbing things in combat? Well, you're pretty open in the hand. I can get a bit of, let me take one of these off. When grabbing, sometimes you want to do this, that's fine, but sometimes you want to get a bit of a rotational grab like that. And just because the way they're strapped and there's not a strap under here, I can get some of that motion in that twist from one, this rivet here, it's sliding, and two, from just using the glove. So I can get a bit of that twist in and it just sort of rolls the gauntlet, but it's still not a finger gauntlet. You're going to be much safer if you imagine like you're throwing a shot and I'm reaching for the top edge of your shield, you can see that it, I, I can roll very easily to protect myself. I, you obviously don't want to get hit in the palm, but a lot better protection than say finger gauntlets would be. You can see how well they staple out like that. So I think for grabbing, that'd be fine. Good protection again with a thumb, because you often, when you're holding something, you're often gonna get chopped in that thumb, the underside, so having this fully enclosed thumb is really nice to go back to that. Um, the other big question is punching with them. Kind of tough to say without something to hit, but in some organizations you want a punch that can really rock someone's dome. Um, it wouldn't be normally considered a telling blow, but if you jack someone in the face, 
with some good power, that'll, you know, it, it, first off, it's distracting, it's partially blinding, and it can hurt your neck and head a little bit. So punching people is not, I've done it a few times. Uh, you can hammer fist someone pretty easily, it seems. Uh, the way it's strapped, the glove wants to, I don't know if you can see this, but the glove wants to slide a little bit down. So I think you lose a little bit hammer fisting, but front on, it feels like there's not a lot of compression. So it feels like, I don't know, again, I'll have to fight with it, but it feels pretty solid if you were to punch someone, and also it would be very safe, especially with your hand closed. So if it came down to it, if you lost your primary weapon or you're grabbing someone's shield, and you want, you want to hit someone in the bar grill or something like that, I probably personally wouldn't want to punch a friend in the, like the ribs or kidneys with this, maybe only where their armor is, because it seems like it would do pretty good. You see the rivet, the rivets are a little bit loose to allow the flexion. Some of the flexion comes from these loose rivets, but when it's closed in a fist, those are pretty tight, so you can see this knuckle bar barely moves at all. So I think when it comes to punching, these would be pretty effective as well. Again, I'll have to use them to say, but for grabbing, punching, pretty good. One thing I haven't tried with them is throwing something. I don't know. This is an illegal throwing weapon, but I can try it. I don't want to throw it too hard because again, it's just a unfinished rattan mace. But a lot of times with gauntlets, if you pick up, say you pick up a throwing ax or something like that, and you try to throw it, it's super awkward. They'll either throw way down in front of you because it hooks on something. So you'll, you throw like this and it goes straight into the ground or vice versa. Let me go out in the, let's go in the front yard and see. And you can usually practice to get around that, but we'll see. And again, I don't want to throw this too hard because, I don't know, it might go through someone's windshield if it's got a bad hook to it, but. I can see it's sort of grabbed here. You sort of heard it. So they may not be great for gleaning throwing weapons until you get used to it. So I threw, I let go, I was aiming forward. It hooked something and spiked straight into the ground. That doesn't seem too bad if you open the hand really actively instead of just loosen the hand if you open it. So we'll practice with that a little bit. And like everything else, I'll do, uh, I'll do, some, um, do some experiments with fighting. They're really fun. I'm really excited. I've been waiting a long time for these. Super stoked. So I gave these a, a, a weight measurement. They're a little heavy for my kitchen scale, so I had to use my bathroom scale, which I will admit is not super accurate. But uh, they came in at three pounds all three times I measured them as a set, so roughly one and a half pounds each. And uh, I'm very excited about them. I can't wait to fight with them. Um, I think they're going to be fantastic. Uh, but uh, I will hold off on giving a full review until I've done a bunch of fighting in a bunch of different styles. Right now, my uh, early estimation is that for protection, A+. Uh, for build quality, A+. Uh, for dexterity, heat, and uh, the ability to use it as a, like, uh, on um, non-great weapons, I'd give it a, you know, a B, B-, minus, and that's sort of what you would expect. You would have a much less protective probably finger gauntlet, or you could be fighting in something a little bit more modern, like a hockey gauntlet that's beefed up and disguised. Um, but you wouldn't expect to get that level of dexterity out of something that is uh, so protective. And at one and a half pounds each, the weight is much, much lighter than a lot of uh, what you might expect for a highly protective mitten gauntlet, because again, I, uh, I'll have to look up the stats, but it's relatively thin metal. It's the heat treating that um, provides them all the hardness and durability. So more news soon. Hey, so those are my first impressions. As I said, I'll probably try to do a video review of these later. If you have any questions, if you have any feedback or input, if you found this to be uh, useful for you, interesting, or totally boring and I should stop uh, making videos like this, let me know either way. Uh, if you do find these videos to be helpful, uh, go ahead and subscribe or hit the like button. Feel free to share or anything like that. I've been thinking about contributing back to Medieval Combat, HEMA, SCA, EMP, Battle of the Nations a little bit by doing some video stuff since I live in a somewhat isolated area. Uh, so if it's fruitful, let me know. If I could make it better, let me know. If this is a waste of my time and your time, let me know. Cool. Well, thanks. Uh, thumbs up.